Okay, the structure of the home faces west, so we're approaching it from the east. This structure does not have an address posted on it. It's got a faded address posted on the, painted on the front street curb. This is the exterior receptacle outlets. GFCI protected. Now when this home was built, that was a weather cover that was acceptable. That said, by today's standards, because of the lack of overhang, we have soffit vents. Because of the light, and we have yellow jackets. Nature video. There we go. Hey guys, what's going on? They're actually beneficial unless they're stinging you. So you probably don't want them around usually, but they are beneficial. But by today's standards, we'd have what's known as an in-use cover. It's kind of like a bubble or a helmet, and that way you can plug your Christmas lights in, for example, and then close it and then remain, remain plugged in. As it is now, if you plug your Christmas lights in, for example, you can't close it. You can't close it, so the rain comes on in. <clears throat> so, yeah, they've made improvements since this house was built. The doorbell is not illuminated. I hear it. It's broken. Not illuminated, not sealed. Siding. And the siding looks fairly new, actually. Doesn't last forever. I'm glad they replaced it. If they hadn't replaced it, we'd be having a different conversation. These light fixtures should be sealed to help prevent moisture, just like the rain. <clears throat> just like the button there. This is not a wood destroying insect report. It's not a wood destroying insect inspection, but if we were doing one anywhere the wood mulch is next to the structure, underneath the eave, actually I believe the drip line is the technical term, uh, then that's conducive to wood destroying insects. It is. And then bushes, any bushes, should be cut back away from the house. Lawn sprinkler heads should not be closer to the structure than 12 inches. These windows are double pane aluminum frame windows. They're pretty much dated. I saw some uh, correspondence where a promise was made or what that some or all these windows are going to be replaced. I, I don't know. I don't know that. All I know is what's here. There's also some comment made about the front door. A tree should not be closer than 25 feet to a slab foundation. To allow for root growth, foundation problems, uh, trees touching the roof, those kinds of things. The rain gutter is a little worse for wear here. A little worse for here. Now we've had foundation repair. It's obvious. It's obvious inside and out. We'll have an inside video coming up next. But inside and out, it's obvious that there's been some foundation repair coming on along. We were talking about the overlapping in the two videos earlier, and these bushes should not be touching the house. We talked about the flashing two videos earlier, about it not being quite two inches. Torn screen, your home inspector who does not wax his mustache thanks to the corona. Sorry about that. Okay. High soil due in part to the foundation repair. Soil should not be higher than your foundation. Water goes downhill. There should be actually about four inches gap that you can see the foundation around it. And then your grading and drainage. This is okay right in here. But as we come along right in here, it's just not diverting water away from the structure like it should. I'm scared to put my hand up here. I probably will. I don't have a lot of brains. Yep, that's the clothes dryer vent. No wasp in there. Clogged and stuck open. Clogged and stuck open. We're going to talk more about that guy. That's for sure. I saw some things. I left the ladder hanging up here. Okay, this is electric service to the house. And it should be sealed on three sides. We got some pretty good cracking going on there here underneath the meter. 
Now, if you'll notice, this is the garage. Or maybe you didn't notice, maybe you didn't know. And then the cracking continues up here. Okay, but we have got the garage. This is the north wall. Is that right? West? I say this is the west. South wall, excuse me. South wall. And what I'm not seeing is an expansion or a control joint. I like to call them control joints. It's like in the street. That, that line right there, they expect the street to move over here in Capel. So they put those joints there so that the street doesn't break up. It just moves along the joints. Got this nice long wall here. No control joints. No control joints. So it's going to move. It's going to move. We, we made, I say we did, but the structure has created its own control joint. Right there. I left the ladder up. I wanted to, like I said, two videos. I'm missing a little bit of soffit screen right there. Two videos ago, when we got up on the ladder. Grampy, I, I wish I would have brought this to your attention. See this edge flashing right here? See the rain gutter? You think the water can go up in between there? Sure can. This rain gutter is supposed to go behind the edge flashing. It's supposed to be installed behind it, not in front of it. Not in front of it. I do have a technical bulletin for that one. I, I, feel, I feel like sharing. I do. All this wood, all this old rotten wood, it should just be plowed up. I'm gonna put some gravel in there or something. Are you asking for termites? Will you please come eat me? Eat my house? What is this? I know what they were doing. I know what they were doing. They're having trouble getting in and out of their cars. They wanted something, you know, when it's raining and stuff. I get it. Probably did all right for a while. Exterior light fixture should be sealed. We still got power back here. We did not have the bubble cover. There's no power now because I already tripped it on the front. We'll come back and check it. Okay. Metal overhead car door. More signs of foundation repair. This vertical car entry casement. Car entry casement. This vertical casement should not be in direct contact with the cement. It's supposed to be a gap down there. We got a little bit of movement here. A little bit of movement. Why? Because capillary action, water gets sucked up inside the wood and rots it like it did over here. The other side will happen. It will. Just give it some time. More of that interesting walkway. It's not dimensionally uniform. It's probably a trip hazard. Just saying. This step is not dimensionally uniform and probably a trip hazard. This whole deck is an unconventional installation. We got wood to ground contact around the vent. You know, if this is a termite inspection, you know, then I'd be telling you all about the wood to ground contact. There's, there isn't any ventilation. There isn't any ventilation under this deck. And then the piece of resistance to top it all off, they've painted it. Okay, so the brick cannot breathe. They did not stain it. They painted it. So they've encapsulated the top of the deck. And it's just like putting a glass jar, take the lid off, turn it upside down, and put it on and stab it in the ground. And then the water will come up inside the jar and collect inside the jar from the ground. That's what's happening to the deck. I can feel it moving underneath my feet. So they've, you know, the deck will only lasts so long. It's wood. But they've shortened the life by painting it. The benches are dimensionally uniform. The rails balusters spaced farther apart than four inches see that i don't know man i would not put i don't feel good with just my 170 pound self being up here i wouldn't put very many people on this deck this deck is not for entertaining so if it's not for entertaining then it's an attractive nuisance just saying it's time it's just time High soil, high soil, high soil. There's another one of those control joints that we didn't have, that we do now. Okay, let's take us some of those high soil, like I said, deck, deck, deck. Uh, this one, because we are underneath the patio, and it's a judgment call, but I don't, my judgment, which isn't the last word, 
But my judgment is that these should not have to have in use covers because they're they're already protected pretty well. That's that's my judgment. The report will be a little more vague. It'll say some, and you can use your judgment. So that's cool. We all get we all get to be judgmental today. Uh, insulations off of this patio door. This is the water heater drain, temperature pressure relief valve drain. They're supposed to be between three inches, and that's about three inches, maybe four. I don't know. No, that's about three, about three inches, and six inches from the ground. So that's that's positioned well. When we go inside, we want to see what they did for a safety pan. We want to see what they did for you know if they did have a safety pan, they have a control switch or something, because obviously. Um, the provisions for a safety pan drain have not been made here, so how did they address that? That's something we're going to be looking forward to. More high soil, more high soil, and then we got some bootleg electrical here. I just don't know what this is about. Yeah, it goes under the deck. That's kind of, kind of exciting. Might be, well, might be worse than exciting, might be alarming. Okay, the power to this thing? It doesn't look like it's got any power to it. Is that because I tripped the GFCI? I'm going to undo the GFCI. This is, I'm just really not impressed by that. I mean, besides being an electrical issue, it's a trip hazard. Coming on along. Yep, this is the master bedroom. My reason why is I made some notes earlier. And back faucet works and it does not have a vacuum breaker. It does not have a vacuum breaker. And my notes were is what part of the house was the tree touching the roof and it's touching the west, east, northeast corner of the master suite, master bathroom bedroom area. These paving stones, they're, just, they're good. I got them around my house. Just don't trip on them. Oh, and that cord goes over here to this guy. Is that what that's about? So we got bootlegged electrical underneath the deck. I recommend that all that be taken out when the deck gets taken out, removed or replaced. If you're in love with it, redo it. You know, I mean, I, I can see at one time it was probably desirable. High soil, high soil. Coming on along. There's your rain gutter. You're just kind of hanging out in the tree a little bit. Is that other one is all bootlegged off of it. Man, they've got a lot of receptacles around here. I guess they were doing some entertaining. I don't know. I don't know what they were doing. Something was happening. High soil, high soil, high soil. This is one of those. The only one I've found so far. This is the control expansion joint. See how the sea line is dry inside of it? It'll do that. It's kind of supposed to do that. So every once in a while, we come in. And we reseal it and we recock it. You know what I'm not seeing? Nothing gets past me eventually. I'm not seeing weep holes. Home ownership 101. All roofs leak. Especially up in those. <laughs> okay, so I wasn't able to be smart, Alec. But anyway. All walls leak, all roofs leak, home ownership 101. They're designed to shed water faster than they accept it. So any moisture get in brick is porous, by the way. Brick is porous. And we got sprinkler heads that are closer than 12 inches. So any moisture that gets into the wall, we're supposed to have these little weep holes around here that allows the vapor, sometimes water, you know. I've seen a couple of vents, but sometimes water. But they at least let the vapor out. Hey buddy, you wanna be part of my wildlife video? Okay, there you go. So we do not have weep holes. That Texas Real Estate Commission, it's performance based, performance based. So if this house has been functioning without weep holes, then it kinda is what it is. Nobody's making me call it deficient. I want, it is a deficiency though. It's not that I want to call it deficient. I feel obligated to call out that deficiency. And I'm allowed to. 
They said, you can do that, bud. You can do it. And how's that all work? All looking good? We're all kind of fun. We already talked about this. Another, more cracks. Coming along, this rain gutter is all crushed. This is crushed. It's kind of bad, kind of sad. Kind of bad, kind of sad. Trees too close, trees too close. That's not a tree, that's a bush, bud. That's a long, bigger around than three inches, that's a tree. Used to be a bush. Used to be a cute little kitten. And grew up to be a nasty old tomcat. I would look at the foundation repair work and what other recommendations were made. People have a peer mentality. It's obvious that peers have been installed. A peer mentality. But that might not have been the only, only recommendation. They might have recommended that the grading and drainage on the other side of the house be fixed. They might have recommended that these trees be removed. They might have recommended a root barrier for this tree. The foundation work might not be complete. It might not be complete. It's just a thought. But most foundation companies, they're very myopic. They're, all they want to do is sell you some peers. So, what did the engineer say? What did the engineer say about water leakage after the foundation repair? What did the, uh, on the supply side and the drain side, what did the engineer say about that? You have an engineer's stamp. You need an engineer's stamp of approval for the work that's been performed. I mean, that's what I would be looking for.